What's up? What's good? Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Wednesday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. Hope each and every one of you are doing great. And I hope that you're having a great week. It's hot as hell outside. So be prepared for that. Drink lots of water. If you could please hit that like button, subscribe button, and that bell notification button. So you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word. That'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of most of my videos. So what's up? How are you doing? It's crazy hot out. It's early and it's already hot. Humid, gross, 40 plus degrees the last few days. Basically hotter than it's been all goddamn summer. But that's life. That's how it goes, I guess. That's what we're dealing with in 2023. But today we're going to do some story time. I'm going to go back and I'm going to tell you what I think is a pretty funny story. Uh, not hilarious, but comical. And it goes back to when I was in the Don jail with the homicide. So a lot of people who've watched my channel, who just started watching my channel, you may not know, when I was in the Don jail in 2009, 2010, there was a homicide on my block. A guy got stomped to death, dragged his body dragged to the front of the range and left on a mattress, eyes open like this. Big murder investigation, caught everybody on the range up in it. Half of the range stayed in the Don, half of the range went to the East Detention Center and uh, basically were treated like Hannibal Lecter for months and months. And this is a story about that process. So after Buddy got killed, right, everybody's clearly locked up. That is the process. They're going to lock everybody up and they're going to do their investigation. Now. I guess because they wanted to try and divide and conquer. So they don't have everybody in the same unit, everybody kind of cooperating a story together. They tried to separate. So half of us, after getting our knuckles checked, after getting, they even made us drop the joints and took a picture. Because he was naked, there's the possibility that I guess there could have been a grape or something, right? So they went all out, you know, did the swabs under your fingernails, all that crap. Uh, and we got shipped to the East Detention Center. Now, when we first got to the East Detention Center, they didn't know what to do with us, right? They didn't want to put us on range. The guy who had been killed was from Scarborough. So they were worried that that guy's... Sorry about that. They were worried that that guy's people were going to retaliate. There's a real possibility. And I'm telling you, they were coming to the block within the first day. They put us on 3C left, which was court cells at the time. They put us there and kept us from the whole joint, right? And they kept coming and saying, oh, this the guys are going to get you. This guy's got deep connections in this joint. They put an article in the paper saying that every single person on the range ratted. That's what they, they literally tried to destroy each and every one of us so that they could get somebody to tell. And the reality was it took them five months to, to charge somebody uh, with that. And I, I know somebody did snitch. I don't know the guy's name. I know that in the trial, somebody did testify is this, I'm, from what I was told, it was this native dude that I remember had a big scar on his face, was in on a body himself, and decided to have a, a, a change of heart or whatever, and told and testified, apparently. But it's a difficult thing to see somebody get killed, but when you've killed somebody, it's pretty hypocritical to now turn and say that, you've had a change of heart. Why didn't you have a change of heart before you killed somebody, right? Or why didn't you have a change of heart and plead guilty? You're fighting your case, right? You suddenly have this magical change of heart when you feel like you can gain from being a snitch. Ugh, people make me sick, you know? You sign up to this stuff, that's it. 
There is no testifying. There's no protecting yourself, saving yourself from a sentence by talking about somebody else. This is non-existent. You can't do this. Once you get a criminal charge, you are no longer a civilian, a criminal conviction. And the rules change for you in life. You know, it's just a fact. But this guy, I guess, told and uh, eventually they got a couple convictions. A couple guys got out and the time wasn't very much. I think the most time somebody got was five or six years uh, and they would all be out by now. But when we were in the East, there was this dude, okay? And he's an old white guy. The only other white guy on the whole range in the East with me. And he's this old guy, okay? And he was in for selling perks, selling pills and hustling downtown but he's way too old when he told me the story about getting booked he's like he was in moss park the cops saw him do a little drop of the perks and this 65 or 70 year old man who's really who was really overweight and had major health issues tried to run across moss park and get away but got tackled and actually got hurt pretty badly now i felt bad for the man because nobody wanted him in their cell Nobody, right? You got a, a bunch of young black guys and then this old, old white guy who looks like a serious geriatric crackhead. You know what I'm saying? And they just weren't feeling that. And I felt bad. I have a heart, despite the fact that for a lot of my life, I didn't have too much empathy for people. But I, I felt for him. You know, I he didn't seem like a bad guy, seemed like a nice guy. And I accepted him to come into the cell. Now, he snored, which is a huge problem for me. It became a bigger problem day after day after day. But his biggest issue was his guts. I remember one day I'm sitting in the cell and he goes, Matt, uh, I have to use the toilet. And I go, okay, bud, do your thing. Just put a sheet up and courtesy flush. Bro, when I tell you, this man smelled like he had dead bodies buried inside his intestines. The smell was so bad. Stunk up the whole block. The whole block. And not only that, he goes, I think I pooped on myself and my boxers. I need new boxers. I don't have any. And we can't wear a one us. You know, everybody adopts the language, right? But I go, oh, so I, I'm, now I start yelling, CO, CO, we need some boxers. We need some cleaning supplies because we're locked down. We're not allowed out, right? But my cell now smells like the toilet. And when this man's wiping his, all I hear is he takes toilet paper off and I go, I was about to say his name. I say, bro, are you running it back and forth? Like, bro, that's not how you wipe your ass, dog. Like, what kind of grown man doesn't know how to wipe his ass? And the way he did it every time made the cell stink more and more. Finally, bounced him out of the cell. Couldn't handle it. Sorry, burger. Oh! Sorry, bro. <laughs> He's a good guy, though, so it doesn't matter. Kicked him out of the cell. I couldn't take it anymore. The snoring, the pooping, the sharting. It became a major issue. He ended up moving in with some young kid who ended up accepting him in the cell. And they actually lived there for, for quite a while together. So uh, then... Keep in mind, we're on court cells. They now need to figure out what to do with us, right? They can't leave us separate. It takes way too much manpower, too many officers. There's shortage of staff already. This is not a realistic possibility, okay? And I remember one day we're down in in the a and I can't remember what we were doing. We are I can't remember exactly what we were doing. There's like six or seven of us down in a and and they're like, you guys over there, and you rest you inmates over there. And the other guys were like, don't worry, they're cool with us. And this big, big booty, I can't remember her name. She's an old lady with a huge booty, but not that old, but old enough with this huge booty in A&D 
in the east. If you've been in the east, you know who I'm talking about. And uh, she goes to the other guys, it's not them we're worried about, it's you. Do you guys know who you're standing beside? And I was like, what? Like, what, are we all psycho killers? And that is why they think this is because nobody had been charged, right? Nobody had told. Right? Despite the fact that the Toronto Sun had said that everybody had told. Every single person. There's guys facing life on the block. There's guys facing a week on the block. There's hardcore solid cons that have been around for years and years and years like myself that would have never told. Why? For what reason? <clears throat> it's crazy, but the guy did snitch and somebody did eventually tell and uh, one of the guys got out ended up getting killed right away um, another one of them got out right away and then I think four of them got convicted and got four or five years which is pretty soft for a body right but they had to figure out what to do with us so th they took a 3B which at the time had been on the range there's guys that had been on the range for like a year plus. They took all of those guys and moved them and spread them throughout the west, uh, the east. They were so cheesed. They weren't cheesed at us, but they were so cheesed. These guys were being uprooted and put into double cells on the top bunks and blah, 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 right? Uh, they were trying to tell us that the whole jail wanted us dead. This guy was such a gangster, they wanted us dead and the only way we could save ourselves was by telling. But at the same time, we're getting kites from the joint telling us they didn't give a damn. We were good. So we knew. It was just a matter of time. Bro, it took us, what, like a month? I think. Something like that. And they put us on 3B before the month. But they put us on 3B. And then about a month later, they started integrating guys onto the block from the east. And they started with known guys. Like, they started with a patched HA dude, and they started with a couple known shooters in the street, made sure that they were good, and then slowly started integrating people from court and turned it back into a regular range in the East. I was there for seven months, was on a, ch was on a charge that was not mine, had a piece of shit, goofy court cues, who wasn't doing the right thing, and I was stuck during this investigation. I was so mad. If I ever see that dude, ever see that dude, I never saw him again. Best friend of almost my whole life. Came, uh, as soon as he took, because he did eventually take the bit, right? The day that he took the sentence, I got freed up, never saw him again. It was so bad. They gave me bail well on parole because they're like the crown's telling my co in court like we're giving you a slap on the wrist conditional sentence you can free the man up he's been in prison for six months on bogus we the crown said to the judge we have to give him bail we have no choice and they gave me bail this man dragged it out for months and months once i was even out on the street but he finally accepted his charge and then disappeared. Haven't seen him since. I was so mad because what I was going through in the Don and in the East. The whole time I was in the East, there was me and that one HA dude on the range. But for a few months before that, there was no white guys. Just me. And yeah, it's cool, right? I was cool. It was fine. I loved my time in the East. It's still You still feel a way when you don't have a single person that's white. It just, I just, you just feel away, kind of, you know? Uh, if something happens, if something goes bad, you're not going to have any support. <laughs> if you get in a fight with somebody or something, zero support, you know? That didn't happen in my case, though, because I had a one, two guys that I had grown up with in Tyak and uh, big dogs, and they made sure I was good, made sure I smoked every day. Man, I did good time in the East. I don't know what people are saying the East is bad time. I did good time when I was in the East. But being involved in this whole thing helped me decide to stay away from the shit, man. I'm telling you. It was part of the process.
you know, 2010 is around the time that I started deciding I want to change my life. If it wasn't for drugs, I probably would have been done by then, but drugs kept me going and going and going. But a circumstance like this, where you see a dead body, you go through all these trials and tribulations through the sentence, it, it really makes you think about what you're doing in your life. And if I could give you advice, it's don't wait to find out. Don't. You know, uh, they say a smart man, what is it? A smart man learns from, oh, I can't remember the saying, but be wise. Don't learn from your own mistakes. Learn from somebody else's. You know what I'm saying? Pay attention and just don't do it. There's ways to make money legitimately. There, you can get, if, if you're a man, especially right now, and you're just prepared to work hard, you can get a job. You can get a job with a record. All the stuff I saw over the years, homicide, people getting their heads smacked with weight bars, people being brut brutalized, jumped, right? People screaming for their moms, being in segregation, he, hearing those bugs screaming for their lives. These are things that you never shed. They stay with you and in your soul for the rest of your life. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys so you don't have to go through these things yourselves. If I could snap my fingers, nobody goes to jail, nobody goes to prison, nobody's addicted to drugs, nobody needs rehab. That's what I do, but that is not a reality especially in 2023. It's crazy out here, man. It really is. It's nuts out here. And I understand that sometimes you got to do what you got to do and that can lead you to jail. But my advice would be don't go to jail. Man. Especially now. This is the worst time to go to jail. Who knows? The future is so... Who knows? Anything can happen with all these wars and climate and all this shit. Who knows where it's going and when it's going to get there? You want to be locked up? Some apocalyptic shit happens. You want to be locked up if some war starts here? You want to be locked up? Nah. You want to be out and able to fight and protect your family and yourself. Man, take my advice. Just... Listen to what I'm saying. Stop taking life for granted. Start enjoying the little things. If you start enjoying the little things throughout the day, then life will become a lot easier. You know? It's when you're expecting these grand expectations or these big parties all the time and life just got to be fun, 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 fun. That is not real. To create that life for yourself, you are going to break the law you're going to live a lifestyle that is not healthy for you or conducive of success. It's just not a reality. So take my advice, get a job, put your nose to the fucking pavement, work your ass off till you're 60 years old, and then you can retire and fuck around. And at that point, you'll be so old. If you wanna to decide to be a drug addict, do opioids, whatever you wanna do, it won't even matter. You're old. You'll have what you need. But if you do that shit when you're young, then you start falling behind. Falling behind. Falling behind. And before you know it, you can't catch up. And life is gone. And you're stuck in shit. If you could please hit that like button, subscribe button, and that bell notification button to get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of most of my videos. This dude is a funny guy, the old guy, right? I had fun laughing with this dude. But I wish I never met him. I wish I never met anybody I, was, I did time with for the most part. You know why? Because I wish I never went to jail. Love y'all. The new Mac. You can stop it. If you haven't gone yet, you can stop it. You can change the trajectory. Do that.